welcome to online discussion on india evidence act let us discuss the provisions of section 124 of the act this is called that is official communication so official communication that is also a privilege communication that the person who has got some knowledge because of his holding a particular office then he is a public officer he cannot be compelled to disclose communication made to him in official confidence what do in by official confidence a public officer discharges his duty public duty in public office sometimes some matters are communicated to him or confidential matters are communicated to him that is official confidence he keeps official confidence so he cannot be compelled to disclose the facts which came to his knowledge because of official confidence as because he is a public servant section 124 provides no public officer shall be compelled to disclose communication made to him in official confidence when he considers who considers that public officer considers that the public interest would suffer by the disclosure that means section 124 says if a witness is a public servant then he shall he shall not be compelled no public if a public officer shall not be compelled to disclose any communication any communication any information given to him communication made to him because of official confidence when he considers he considers means that public servant considers that the disclosure of such facts such matters will affect the public interest this is section 124 so this section gives this provision gives a privilege to a public servant public officer not public servant is not here public officer to disclose matters which are brought to his knowledge because of official confidence many thing comes to the knowledge of official confidence why this provision the provision that there should be a public officer a communication has been made to him because of official confidence and he considers that public officer considers if that will be disclosed that will hamper public interest so what is what will hamper public interest what is public affairs public uh, communication made to him in official confidence those, those those facts are to be considered in the considering the facts and circumstances of each case separately there cannot be a new universal rule the what matters will not be compelled to be answered by that public servant suppose a contract is entered by a government with a private party may not be then that may not be a uh, official confidence is not there so there are so this there is a privilege which attaches under certain circumstances to communication made, made to a public officer because he should keep a secret secret suppose the selection procedure is going on suppose the transfer matters some policy matters those are confidential matters so those confidential matters so because the extent to which the state should make the use of this privilege has been stated by the supreme court in many cases so here where the supreme court has ridiculed the action of the state in trying to defend the suit of a railway employee a small man by urging a mere technical plea which has been persuaded right up to supreme court here and has been negative suppose in a contractual matter service matter pay matters those matters may not be official confidence 
So here many service dispute comes. For that, if a person says no, that is the official confidence, confidential. No, whether it is a confidential matter or not, that is to be considered in taking the dispute of each case separately. So here, court, Supreme Court has advised that the court should advise the state. States is a virtuous litigant and concedes just demand most willingly. When a suit or case is filed, court, the state must not be a litigant that is a that unscrupulous litigant that with an intention to harass somebody, court that the state will not apply this privilege. So here the Supreme Court observed that it does not believe that the state government took it back even any such document, the production of which may possibly not be in the interest of the state. If a document which is not required but in the interest of the state, which, is, which should not be disclosed in the interest of the state, that in such case, this privilege will not be applicable. So they, that is, in many cases, let down the communication to the state to account a general about a new pay scale of teachers could not be regarded as a privileged communication. What will be the pay scale of a teacher? What is that? Official confidence must be there. For an official confidence, what is official confidence? That has not been mentioned. In a confidential matter, that means that should not be disclosed. If it is disclosed, that will hamper the public interest. Who will, in whose opinion? The public officer considers. This is section 125. Section 125, information as to commission of offense. When an offense is committed, sometimes the police gets information from certain source. There are certain police persons who gives information to the police. They are, because there are sources and different sources, the police officer, the revenue officer, they get information regarding commission of an office. If they will be compelled to answer from which source they got information regarding the commission of an office, then in such case, the source is disclosed that will affect the further detection, the future detection of the crime. No member of the public will infer give such information if his name is disclosed that when he informed regarding the commission of an offense to the police. So uh, that's why section 125 says information as to commission of offense. So no magistrate or police officer, these two officers that the magistrate or police officer shall be compelled to say whence he got any information as to the commission of an offense. So magistrate or the when he got from which source he got that he cannot be compared. Who? That the magistrate and the police, they cannot be compared when and from which where he got this information regarding commission of offense. Similarly, and no revenue officer shall be compelled to say when she got any information as to the commission of an offense. Similarly, a revenue officer who are there to uh, 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 see that government revenue is not lost. If a revenue office offense is committed, it takes action. So in such case, the no revenue officer will shall be compelled to say in court when he got any information as to the commission of an offense against the public revenue. <laughs> this is section one. Point. This who is a revenue officer? Revenue officer has been defined that any officer who is employed in collection of revenue. Revenue officer in this section means any officer employed in or about the business of any branch of the public revenue. Who is employed in any branch of the public. Why? This section is intended to encourage people to give information. If such a restriction will not be there, then nobody, no public person, public will not venture to inform the commission of an offense to the police or to the revenue officer. So this, this section in, is intended to encourage people to give information about offense by protecting source of information. Or otherwise, no one would like to give such information. The source from which the police officer 
noon regarding commission of an offense suppose the source from which the revenue officer knew that there was illegal mining going was going on somewhere or somebody had committed an offense against public revenue he cannot be complained section 125 gives such protection to whom to the police officer or and and the revenue officer but that he is not bound to disclose the source of his information regarding the commission of an offense now section 126 is known as professional communication what is professional communication so it has not been defined what is professional professional communication here in section 126 is confined to only one profession that is advocate or the attorney profession so what it says no uh, this advocate attorney pleader wakil will be compelled will be compelled to disclose what advice he has given to his client or what his client has also communicated to him for getting an advice this privilege also continues even after the this employment engagement of that advocate is completed has been completed or so what section 126 says no barrister attorney leader or wakil all are the same group advocate now this indian advocate act that there there were this all are all advocate no attorney no barrister no pleader wakil shall at any time be permitted shall at any time be permitted unless with his client's express consent if the client gives a consent then we will be permitted to disclose but if there is no express consent express implied consent is not there without the express consent either in writing or orally without express consent of his client to disclose what any communication made to him in the course and for the purpose of his employment as such in the course and for the purpose of his employment these are very important what well, these words are very important so any communication made to him by a person in the course and for the purpose of his employment no advocate no barrister no wakil shall be permitted to shall be without the consent of his client for the purpose of employment or to state the contents or condition of any not only this communication also to state if he if he has referred a document no barrister no wakil no advocate shall be com- shall be compelled to say about the contents of a document which has Oh, which which is acquainted in the course during the course in the course and for the purpose of his professional employment. So, no advocate, no barrister, no wakil shall be compelled to say it, or shall be permitted. Here, compelled is not there. Shall be permitted. Even if voluntarily says that will not be allowed. So, no advocate, no uh, wakil. shall be permitted to disclose unless there is a consent of his client to what to disclose any communication made to him by his client for the purpose of his employment for the purpose of his employment as such barrister during the course and for the purpose of his employment suppose a, a person is a friend to a particular advocate he has disclosed something but if that advocate or the wakil is not engaged by that advocate, that person for the purpose of he has not been engaged as an advocate the if such communication has not been made by that by that friend for the purpose of his employment as an advocate then this provision will not be applicable so what it says only any communication made to an advocate what for during the course and for the purpose of his employment during the employment and for the purpose of his employment if any communication has been made to the, that person or that if any document with which that advocate or barrister is acquainted with in the course and for the purpose of his employment he cannot disclose the contents of the document <coughs> the condition of the document 
not cont contents and conditions. What is the contents and what are the conditions of the document? Or to disclose any advice given by him to his client in the course and for the purpose of such employment. Third, whatever advice he had given to his client for the during the course and for the purpose of his employment, purpose of such employment. This is a privileged professional communication. So when a client comes to the advocate, he communicates something for the purpose of his employment as an advocate in a particular case, then that advocate will not be permitted to disclose any matter which had been informed to him by his client or whatever to disclose any matter of which he had given any advice, legal advice to that client. Except with the permission, without the permission, except with the permission of the consent client. If the client gives permission, consents, if the consent that the client consents for such disclosure, then he can he can do so. This is called professional communication. What communication made to an advocate? What for? For the purpose of employment as an advocate and during continuation of his employment as advocate, any communication has been made by the client or any document with which the advocate is acquainted for the purpose of the continuing continuation and for the purpose of his acquainted in the course of, in the course and for the purpose of his professional employment, in the course and for the purpose of professional employment or to disclose any advice given by that advocate to that client without permission of the, without consent of that client. There are two exceptions. One, when a client comes to an advocate and says something for, in furtherance of illegal acts, then the advocate, that will not be treated as professional communication. Suppose the X, came to his uh, advocate, why? And said, I please prepare a false document and so that I can uh, sell a land. I will sell a land. So there, any communication, this communication is for committing an offense, for committing an illegal act. This is not, this communication is not for, uh, the, the, for the purpose of his employment or in the course of and for the purpose of his employment as an advocate. This is, this this professional communication, that will not be treated as a professional communication and he can be compelled to answer it. Similarly, the second is that, suppose after the engagement of that advocate, after the employment of that advocate, the advocate observes that the client has committed any other acts, any other act which amounts to an offense with reference to that case. For an example, X has been engaged by Y to defend him in a embezzlement case or in a misappropriation case. After his engagement, thereafter that advocate noticed that X had made false, some other false entry in the, in the particular document. So that amounts to an offense. Then this, he can disclose some things. This section 126, you go through the language of the section. What it says, no barrister, attorney, leader, or vakil shall at any time be permitted, at any time be permitted, unless with the express consent of his client, to disclose any communication made to him in the course and for the purpose of employment. These words, in the course and for the purpose of employment, as such, advocate, barrister, client. In the course and for the purpose of his employment. If such communication is not in the course and for the purpose of employment to that advocate, then that is not protected under section. That communication will not be treated as professional communication and that barrister will be permitted to answer. Answer those questions. Or to state the contents or condition of it. Similarly, no advocate, no this barrister, etc. will be permitted to say about the content and condition of a document which came to his, with which he has become acquainted, with, with, with that document he was acquainted. 
But for in the course and for the purpose of the these words, these wordings, these language must be said in the course and for the purpose of the If you if you do not use those words, then your answer will not be complete. In the course and for the purpose of his employment. Or to disclose any advice which he had given to his client. Similarly, in the course and for the purpose of employment. Why I am again I am saying in the course and for the purpose of employment. In the course and during, during the his employment. And for the purpose of employment. If that is not there, during the course and for the purpose of employment is not there, any communication has been made, then section 126 will not be, will not give such protection to that person. But provided that nothing in this section shall protect from disclosure. What any such communication made in furtherance of an illegal purpose, any communication had been made by the client for an illegal purpose. Second, any fact observed by the barrister, pleader, or attorney or okil in the course of it, during the course of his employment, if that advocate observes showing that any crime or fraud has been committed since the commencement of his employment. After the commencement of his employment, the client had committed any crime, a, 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 a crime in respect of his, in the, or a fraud he has committed after, the, after the, his engagement in that case. So it is immaterial whether the attention of such barrister, pleader, attorney or okil was or was not directed to such fact by your own behalf of his client. It is not considered, even if the client has that brought the attention of the barrister, then, then also he will not be permitted. What he says, it is immaterial whether the attention of such barrister, pleader, attorney or okil was or was not directed to such fact by your own behalf of his client. The explanation <coughs> that provides this obligation also extends, this obligation also uh, continues after the employment has ceased, even after the cessation of employment of the client, relationship of client and the attorney. So illustration will make you clear. A, a client says to B, an attorney, I have committed forgery and I wish to defend me. I have committed forgery. I want that you should be engaged as an advocate to defend me. This is a professional commission and the attorney will not be compelled to, to uh, will not be permitted to destroy such that. As the defense of man known to be guilty is not a criminal purpose. Defense is not for a criminal purpose. This communication is protected from this. This illustration B says, a, a client says to be an attorney, I wish to obtain possession of property by the use of a force deed on which I request you to sue. He says, I want to obtain possession, uh, get possession of a particular land from, an, uh, from, the, the, from the particular person on the basis of a force. This is for illegal purpose. So this communication will not be treated as professional communication until this communication can, will not be protected for disclosure. A being charged with embezzlement retains B an attorney. Embezzlement means what? This misappropriation of money. Embezzlement case retains B at attorney to defend him. In the course of the proceeding, B observes that an entry has been made in A's accounts book, charging A with the sum said to have been embezzled, which entry was not in the book at the commencement of B. After his engagement, the attorney found or observe that there was some other entry has been made by the concerned accused in any book. So that means he has committed what? A crime or a fraud after his commencement in a particular document. So for that, even when that document comes to his acquainted with that document, this he is he, he can he is permitted to disclose such things. Because this 126 will not be give a protection to that advocate or okay from not disclosing. This being a fact observed by B in the course of his employment, showing that a fraud has been committed since the commencement of the proceeding, it is not protected from the disclosure. So now, most of the time, you get a question, what is professional communication? This professional communication means any communication made by a client to his advocate for the purpose of employment 
And if any such communication has been made during the course and for the purpose of employment of a person as an advocate, then he will not be permitted whatever communication has been made to him in the court to disclose such thing. Similarly, he will not be permitted if he has any acquainted with any document during the course and for the purpose of his employment of his client, he will not be permitted. Similarly, he will not be permitted whatever advice he had given to his client for, uh, during the course and for the purpose of his employment. There are two exceptions. So when any communication has been made by the client for committing an Ill for illegal purpose, then this protection will not be allowed. Or second, if after employment the client, uh, the advocate observed that the client had done some has committed any crime or fraud on a particular document, then he may be permitted to disclose such things. Why? Communication made by a client to his vocal for the purpose of professional employment are not permitted to disclose. Why? The prohibition extends to all communication made in confidence pertaining to any pending or contemplated case. Because of confidence on the advocates, the client communicates. So if this is subject to a few countries, what is why <laughs> the reason for this prohibition or this code is to encourage litigant to communicate fully and frankly with his lawyer by making such provision. The state government had a provision so that a litigant can make full disclosure, frankly, you will fully and frankly communicate whatever matters regarding a case for his defense without any fear that the information given by them can be passed on to the opponents without any fear that if whatever you will say in the case that will be passed to his opponent or to the court in the absence of this prohibition it would have been difficult for anybody to get the best professional advice for getting best professional advice by the client such a restriction is there because the advocate will not be permitted to disclose any communication made to him by his client during the course and for the purpose of his employment or he will not be permitted to say anything about the condition or content of a document with which he was acquainted during the course and for the purpose of his employment or he will not be permitted to disclose anything what, what advice he had given to his client during the course and the for the purpose of employment but there are two exceptions. If the communication has been made with an intention to commit an legal act, then that is not protected. Second, if after the employment, engagement of that advocate, that advocate observes that the client had done some act, had, had, had committed any offense or any fraud related to a document, then such a protection is not. Now, this is on section 126. This is this provision also equally applicable to this privileged communication. This is professional communication, that is Mohara, this Muktas, this uh, any stenographer or a clerk of the concerned advocate who is aware of, who, to, who, who knows that communication. Now this section 127 says, section 127 to apply to interpreters, etc. The provision of section 126, that is professional communication, that will not be permitted, the advocate will not be permitted to disclose. That will also apply to interpreters. Interpreters means if a particular person interprets a particular writing, etc., to the advocate in the language in which he understood. So interpreters and the clerks or the servants of barrister. A clerk is there, servant is there, a stenographer is there. Barrister, pleader, attorney, or okay, because that stenographer he takes dictation from the concerned advocate regarding the any matters as a case matters, and he also informs him what is the communication has been made. So this protection is also this provision of section 126 shall apply to interpreters and clerks of the servants of barristers. Leader, etc. This is 127. Now, 
want to be privileged not to have by voluntary evidence this section is very important if any party to a suit gives evidence there is at his own instance or otherwise this privilege is there what is that privilege the advocate will not be permitted to show any communication suppose that client voluntary appear in the court and he disclose something so this should not be treated that he had deemed had given there is a deem consent of that party for the advocate to disclose that communication what it says if any party to a suit gives evidence therein at his own instance or otherwise if the party any party to this suit so much to gives any evidence regarding communication or his son lord be his son lord be deemed to have consented thereby to such disclosure as is mentioned in section 1 if the party says this advice has been given by my advocate i disclose such thing so that doesn't mean that thereby he had given deep consent or disclosure of the professional communication or that is any communication which had been given to the advocate for, for the uh, during the course and for the purpose of it and if any party to a suit or proceeding calls any such party suppose a party to a suit all such barrister pleader or attorney or wakil as a witness he shall be deemed to have consented then if or and if any party to a suit or proceeding calls at any barrister pleader or attorney or wakil as a witness he shall be deemed to have consented to such disclosure only if he questions such barrister attorney or wakil on matters which but for such question he would not be at liberty to disclose suppose that party call I call say barrister okil or his barrister and as a witness on his behalf to the witness box and when he puts a question regarding the communication which he had made to him or what communication had been advice which he had given to him if he puts if that a question is put by his advocate regarding such then only then it will be treated that the, that he has consented for such disclosure but mere merely calling the advocate to the witness box by the party to examine him as a witness that is that will not be treated as a deem consent but when a question is put that put to that advocate what is regarding such matter regarding okay on matter which which you would not have which you ought not to have disclosed which you would not have disclosed if such a question is put to him then only that will be treated as a deemed consent and that barrister will be permitted to disclose so so section 127 and 128 have to be read together section 128 what he says if he as because a party in his evidence says something about the communication professional communication uh, i made by him in the communication made by him to his advocate or in advice given by his advocate to him that will not be treated as a deemed consent of the party for disclosure of such by the advocate but if that party calls that advocate as a witness and he puts a question regarding such matter regarding such communication then that will be treated that he has consented it will be treated as deemed consent by such party that the advocate or the attorney should disclose such facts such communications in that is section 128 129 confidential communication with legal advisers this is another sometimes legal advice is given so no one shall be compelled to disclose to the court any confidential communication which has taken place between him and his legal professional advisers suppose a person may not be an advocate but a person who has knowledge on law he may give legal advice in company or any in a company matter some legal advisors in bank some legal advisors are there any confidential communication has been made uh, to a person to uh, any no one shall be compelled to disclose the court any confidential communication which has taken place between him and his legal professional advisor no one a person any legal uh, professional advisor any communication has any any communication has been made confidential communication that person will not be permitted to disclose unless he offers himself as a witness in which case 
he may be compelled to disclose any such communication as may appear to the court. If that person is appears as a witness, then in such case, if the court considers that some fact must be disclosed, necessary to be known in order to explain any evidence, only to explain any evidence. Suppose that person, that is a communication between a person and his legal advisor, who is confidential communication, then no one shall be compelled to disclose whatever communication has been made between him and his legal advisor in court. But if that person appears as a witness, appears as a witness, when and uh, there is uh, some communication has been made between him and his confidential communication has been made between him and his legal advisor in such case, when he appears as a witness, the court may permit, the court may permit, uh, uh, that the, he may be compelled to disclose, the court may um, allow, the in which case he may be compelled to disclose any such communication as may appear, any such communication between him and the legal advisor, as uh, the court considers which are required but to explain an evidence. It is very important to explain an evidence. If an evidence is coming, for explaining that evidence, whatever evidence is given, to explain any, explains any evidence which he has given, explain any evidence means that whatever evidence he is given, to explain that evidence, the court may permit that person to disclose any confidential communication between him and his legal advisor. So this section 129, as you should try to understand, no one shall be compelled to disclose any communication, confidential communication between him and his legal advisor. But if that person appears as a witness, then he may be compelled. He may be compelled to disclose any communication made between him and his legal advisor which is necessary, which the court, court thinks that is necessary to explain the evidence what he is giving in court. This is section 129. So this is section 129. Now 130. Production of title is of witness not a party. Suppose a person is not a party. A person is someone to produce a document. If he he is exempted. He cannot. He is not. He cannot be compelled to produce a document on which he, if he is not a party. If he is not a party, to, unless he had previously consented in writing for production of that document. This section 130 says, no witness who is not a party to a suit shall be compelled to produce his title deeds to any property. A witness will not be compelled to produce. Any document which is titled to his property or any document in virtue of which he holds any property or he holds any property, any document he holds that property as a pledge or pani or mortgagee. So no witness, if that witness is not a party to the suit, he cannot be compelled to produce a document of which, to which he holds any property, document of title of his own property or any document in respect of which he is a, in, on, in, uh, holds any property as a pledge or a mortgagee or any document the production of which might tend to criminate him or if will produce document that will cause any prejudice to criminate him unless he has agreed in writing to produce them with person seeking the production of such deeds or some person through whom he claims. If that person had previously agreed in writing with whom? With the person seeking the production in writing, then he will be compelled. Section 136 says, this section covers three matters. That ordinary witness, namely a witness who is not a party, cannot be compelled to produce. He cannot be compelled to produce, but his title deeds. Because he is not a party, he cannot be compelled to produce any property of which he has title, any document of his title to any property, or any document by which he becomes the pledge or mortgagee of any property, and any document which might tend to criminate him, which may criminate means that is which is cause <coughs> or which is liable. But he can be so compelled if he has agreed to produce any such document, he can be compelled if prior to previously or prior to 
uh, of issues of the suit he had agreed or during the filing of the suit he had agreed in writing at which the instance such document is to produce for production of that document. in such case he can be compelled but he can be so compelled if he has agreed to produce any such document with the person seeking its production lastly section 130 31 what he provides that a person who has the possession of a document shall not be compelled to produce it which if the document were in the possession of another person he would be entitled to refuse to produce, produce it similarly i am not a witness so x is not a witness but the document of a third party is with him he can because if that third party is called as a witness if he is witness he will not produce any document of his title of his own property or he will not produce any document of, of any property of which he is a pledge or a mortgage or he will not produce any document which will criminate him which will which might tend to criminate him so if that document is in the possession of a, another person who is not then he will not be produced so here here witness would no witness in section 130 no witness a person is a witness he cannot be compelled but here section 130 one says a person is not a witness in spite of that he cannot be compelled to produce certain document what it says production of document or electronic records which another person having possession could refuse to produce if another person is permitted as per law for refuse to refuse that a production of a document or electronic record if that document or electronic record is in the possession of a third or any other person he can no you cannot be compelled to produce that document no one shall be compelled to produce documents in his possession or electronic record under his control no one person, no person who is under whose control a document or electronic record will be is there he will be, he cannot be compelled to produce document which any other person would be entitled to refuse to produce if they were in his possession if any other person if under which possession if that document or electronic record if is justified for not production if for only in such case if any other another person is also in possession he can refuse the production he cannot be compelled or control only such last mentioned person consent to that in the last mentioned person that is <coughs> would have refused production if he consents what section 139 is substituted by the information technology act for the purpose of accommodating electronic record that is there is also the new section says that no one shall be compelled to produce document in his possession electronic records under this his control which any other person would be entitled to if any other person is entitled to refuse for production of that document the person who under whose possession that document is available document is in existence he cannot he, he cannot be compelled to produce this is section 130 1 132 witness not excused from answering on the ground that answer will criminate him so this section a witness is bound to answer the question whatever even if that answer will go against him will not will not make him liable either criminal or civil liable criminate him so a witness shall not be excused from answering any question as to any matter relevant to the matter in issue this is this is to be marked no witness shall be excused to give answer to any question as to the matter relevant to the matter in issue irrelevant if irrelevant question is put to a witness he can refuse to answer but no witness will be permitted to will not be excused to answer any question on any matter which relevant to the issue in any issue or in civil or criminal proceeding if that is relevant in that criminal proceeding or civil proceeding upon the ground on the ground that the answer to such question will criminate or may tend directly or indirectly to criminate either cause make liable him directly or indirectly make him liable him but such witness or that it will expose or tend directly or indirectly to a, expose such witness to a penalty by giving that answer you will be or that directly or indirectly will expose such witness to a penalty or for picture of any kind so section 130 to says so the person is a witness is bound to answer a question which is relevant which is relevant to the matter in issue 
either it in a criminal case or in a civil case. So he, he cannot take excuse that he will answer that question that will criminate him, that will, by, by that answer he will be liable for any civil or criminal liability or he will be liable for any penalty or forfeiture of any property. But one restriction is that whatever answer he gives, for that he cannot be arrested. What he says, provide that no such answer, which a witness shall be compared to give, shall subject to any arrest or prosecution or be proved against him in any criminal proceeding. So even if an answer is given, so he cannot, the witness is not excused to answer a question on the ground that the answer will criminate him or he will be li liable for any civil or criminal liability or for which or a property or penalty, but he is bound to answer. If he answers, only restriction is that because of that answer, he will not be arrested, will not be prosecuted or <coughs> be, that will not be proved against him in any criminal procedure except the prosecution for giving false evidence by such as. If he gives false evidence by such and such, then only that can be used in a criminal procedure. So now section 132 says, no witness shall be excused to answer any question which is relevant to the matter in issue, either in a criminal proceeding or in a civil proceeding on the ground that that answer will expose him to criminal liability or civil liability or by giving such answer, he will be, he will be liable, his property will be forfeited or he will be liable for it, any penalty. But only restriction is that if he gives an answer, then basing on that answer, though it is a criminate answer, it will criminate him, then on such ground he cannot be arrested, he cannot be prosecuted, except on giving evidence, false evidence. So this is in nutshell. So this is this competency of this and previous competency. Let us conclude. In the next class, we'll discuss this <laughs> accomplishing evidence. Thank you all.